to Home Farm. Today, we're going to be changing this door handle and putting in something that's more appropriate for the period and is more sensitive to the heritage of the property. When we came to see the house, um, this was one of the main features that we really, really loved about the, the property. Um, it's an old stable door, um, and you can see the size of these very, very chunky um, wrought iron hinges. And the story is that this, the stable boys that were um, that would stay over and work here um, would basically graffiti into the back of the door and they would put their initials in and their the year that they were here and we've got for example GB I don't know if that's an initial or if it's Great Britain but I think it's an initial GB 1950 um, we've got 1944 the oldest one that we have found so far has been this one which is 1895 which is pretty incredible and just goes to show the authenticity and the age of the property and how much history is really here. A lot of friends and visitors that come to see us, um, we show them this door and they really love it and they think it's a really special piece of history and just such a nice um, thing to see in the house that's still really showing how many people lived here, how many people worked on this farm and it's just a very very special um, door to us so we will do everything that we can to protect it and make sure that we keep it in the best condition possible when we first came to look at the house interestingly enough there was a completely different lock and handle on this back of this door i vaguely remember it being a brass um, vintage lock I'm not sure, I don't think it was the original original. Um, obviously this door does go as far as we know back to 1895. The house was built in 1850, around that period. So this door could even go back um, further than 1895 to around 1850. The door handle and the door lock that was on here, as I said, I don't think was the original, but it was a vintage door lock and it really suited the whole look and feel of this door. So one was one of the pieces that we noticed when we were doing the house tour when we first came to purchase that property. Subsequently, we moved into the house and the door handle had been changed in that period from us seeing the, ha the house to actually them moving in. And unfortunately, the, the old brass door handle and lock, it's called a rim lock, had been removed and this had been put in its place, which is more of a, Excuse me, oops. Which is more of a 1970s um, rim lock style, and it in no way is in keeping with the period of the of the door. The period of the door is Victorian, and this obviously doesn't match. We're not sure where this handle has come from. It does not. Um, it is not the right handle for the lock. It is not the same handle that came with the lock originally because it's just been put on here loosely. And as you can see, it's really wobbly. And you can also see the stain here showing the size of the lock that was there when we first came to view the property. And then when we moved in, this has now been put in place. And as you can see, there is quite a color difference there. It looks odd. It looks strange. It looks like a bit of a mess to be honest and because this is such a special piece of the house we just feel like it's not really doing this door very much um, too many favors then on the other side of the door we have more original features and these are original pieces we believe and um, you know you can see the age of them and the durability of them and then there is this door handle which in fairness, at least it is in the same uh, color, color tones and it does kind of work on some level. But it is a bit odd that on one side we have this wobbly door handle that is then going into this handle. And there's been a little bit of a home DIY job done on this by somebody at some stage. They've drilled a hole here and put this screw in i was wondering what why they had gone to the trouble of drilling the hole and putting the screw in the reason why they've done that is because 
this come this will slide all the way out which i'm not going to do right now because then it causes a few problems with us trying to take it all to pieces later so all in all it's not ideal it's not very functional um, and more importantly for us it's not really in keeping with the rest of the door and you can see that it has all been changed and it's all different this doesn't match this doesn't match this we are we'll probably uh, resell this piece um, and this piece but this doorknob I think is really lovely and it is obviously a, a vintage piece so I am going to keep that and we'll just keep it in the, the storeroom and see if there's any projects in the future that we need to use it or we can use it on something else later. So I searched the internet, I did some research, I checked the styles um, on various architectural heritage websites um, just you know just googling stuff you know period features hardware door handles victorian and um, like you know those kind of 1850 style door handles i just did a whole bunch of google searches just to kind of get a general idea of what we should be going for and then i measured this um the outline of this space to find out kind of what size we should be also aiming for. I knew that we wanted to go with this same style, which is called a rim lock. And um, I did decide that maybe having the round handle would be good. I decided to purchase this. It is called, it was on the description of Victorian rim lock. The one thing that um, we wanted was to make sure that we've got a really good quality one because I'm not planning on changing this anytime soon again. Now, once this is on, I'm hoping this is gonna stay in place certainly for the duration of us staying here, hopefully for the next generation of people that live here. They do range from price points of 15 for your lower end entry level reproduction models, um, or, and then they go right up. I saw ones, uh, even saw ones, some lovely ones on a website which I really like called Willow and Stone. I use them a lot to, for inspiration. Um, quite frankly, some of their price points are a little bit eye-watering for us. Um, but I would definitely recommend that you check them out if you're looking for period features, especially kind of this Victorian kind of age. <clears throat> they have got some lovely, lovely things. Um, but some of their rim locks were really quite pricey, um, a little bit more than we wanted to spend at this point. So I used them as a, as a nice inspirational point of, okay, what, what should I be looking for? What kind of style should I be looking for? Also, when searching for the handle, obviously you want to make sure if it's left or right. Um, you know, if you're, you know, which way it faces and which way that the side the handle's on. So that's something else to keep in mind. Because a rim lock, you only get this bulky box on one side of the door and then the other side is just the handle. So you just want to keep in mind that you can't just turn this around, you know, so you do need to buy the correct left or right model. So this one I really liked. It's completely metal hardware, which is really nice. No plastic or cheap um, things here. Decided to go for black, I just thought it was a nice neutral colour, it was a classic colour, wouldn't go out of uh, fashion and be something that we can, you know, have and enjoy for, for many, many years. Um, also a lot of the hardware, like the hook and some of the um, hinges that you, that, you know, are on the left side of me, are also really, really dark black wrought iron. And a lot of our other hardware on our other oak doors around the house are all black wrought iron latches. So I just thought this is probably the best way to go. Hi. Come and assist me. Are you assisting? So, as you can see, this is going to fit over this. Um, we're hoping it's going to be a really good match for size. And then it comes with a really nice um, handle. Uh, went for a beehive style handle, uh, which I'll show you. And again, with the handles, you just want to watch out for whether you um, Price points will kind of give you an indication of whether the handle is actually plastic or wood. Um, so I think we paid about £20. We'll link everything down below. But I think it was in that range. And these are brass and wood. So these are the handles that, that come with it. So you can hear it's quite nice solid brass. And um, it's also a really nice solid black ebony wood uh, in a beehive style and we're hoping that that is going to go in oh, that's going to go in there and hoping it's going to look really smart and nice. Mars is going to get on and change this now 
and we're going to cross our fingers and hope it's one of those nice DIY projects that is really quick, really simple and that we're not going to start getting any little challenges come up, but we'll see how it goes. First up, we're going to remove the front door handle, then we'll take out the one at the back and hopefully all the measurements of all of the handles will just slide into each other. the lock on took us about two minutes the nice thing about doing it together with the two of you is that one person kind of pushed the door from the other side so you get that resistance when you're doing the screws and um, it doesn't require any drilling you just literally just hand screw these in so now we're going to put the door handles on as you can see it's quite a nice fit on that side this side the door handle that was there previously it has left a square mark we're just going to hope as much as possible that that ring will cover it up a little bit and make it less noticeable. We'll see how it goes. Leopold's been helping us a lot, haven't you? Right, so the door handle's on, it's working as it should, not clicking, it was really easy to put on, thankfully because the holes are pre-done. So next up we're going to change this thing, I'm not sure what it's called, it's basically where the, the lock uh, slides into it. Uh, I think this is going to be potentially the most challenging portion of this because I think there's going to be variable lengths from that one to this one but hopefully it won't be too difficult. So we've removed the old one. And I think that they try to fortify this with a little bit of thin timber. And it's, uh, it's all broken out, so it's actually not part of the original frame, they've actually gouged that out. So things were going swimmingly up until this point. The problem is that the way that the previous owners had had this enclosure put on is too far away from the actual lock that will actually clip into that. So, what we're going to do is we're going to have to bring this forward a touch and in order to do that we're going to cut a small piece of wood well, which has been cut already i'm going to gouge out a little bit of this just to make this area flat nice and flat we're then going to place that in we're going to stick it in and that will give us a nice surface on which to actually mount this and in order to allow us to just bring it across just about almost three quarters of a centimeter which will give us the area that we need in order for the lock to actually clip into this. So 
So we just took out a little bit of the eye works. You can see that that slides in really nicely now. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to bring it across just a fraction. So about there. We're going to wood filler that, polyfiller, and we're going to paint over this. By doing so, we're going to have enough space to bring this across and get that in there for the door to close. So as is so often the case with DIY projects, it's always the things that you think that aren't going to catch you up that do. So in our case, changing the door handle was really, really easy. The issue in this instance was that this with the actual bolt and uh, things click into from the door handle. We had to push back because there was a variable length to the other attachment that they had in place. In order to accomplish that, we needed to use a, a thicker piece of wood and we had to uh, gouge out a, a slightly bigger area for us to slot it into. It has, however, created quite a nice solid base for that to screw into. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna wood filler all of these portions here so that it just looks neat and tidy. And once all of that's done, we're going to give the entire doorway a lick of paint. This is the wood filler that I really like to use. It's from a brand called Superdac. Um, it's just really easy to apply and really easy to get into, into tight places. So we've wood filled it in, it's looking good. I might not even sand down too much of it when it's finished to be honest because it's got a nice effect which kind of matches the wood grain and the unevenness of the wood. And once it's painted I don't even think we'll be able to see this. So we successfully changed the rim lock, adding a bit more authenticity back to the door. It now blends in really, really well. We're very, very pleased with it because everything now matches. Uh, also thanks to Kirsten. She did a, an awful lot of research about rim locks in particular, finding the right style, which is a Victorian type rim lock, which obviously matches the pair of the house because the house is 1850s. So it blends really well. We're very, very pleased with the way it's turned out and uh, it was a lot easier than we thought it was going to be. Thanks for watching. You can also follow us on Twitter or check out our website at myhomefarm.co.uk. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you have any suggestions for any other videos you would like to see, please leave a comment. We hope to see you on our next video.